My name is Elodie and I'm a user-centered designer. User-centered design is uh, when a designer uh, focuses on the user to develop a product or service. So it's basically um, involving the user in, during the whole process of uh, development of a product. But in reality, the thing is that there is a lot of companies that don't care about that and that focus on the marketing, on their strategy. And it's completely the opposite for user-centered design. As you see, the hosts are very uh, narrow. <laughs> um, but what I like to, to think is that there is other way to think. And for instance, to be close to the user bring a lot of um, different answers during a design process. For instance, uh, I will explain you through one of my projects how, how it works. Um, there is an interaction part. It's when you interact with the user. You, uh, you speak to him, you try to understand what they think, um, to be with him maybe one or two days full time, to really get into um, what is everyday life for him. Um, in this project, the, the user was a person uh, who had a handicap in lower leaves, and he would use a walker to go around every day. Um, I took some picture, recording, videos to understand really how he would use the product. It's to understand how he can interact with the product. I wanted to develop another one, uh, another walker, in to, to make it more user-friendly. So I spent some hours just taking picture of him, recording him, trying to find out how, how I could improve it. And this is a very important part when you want to develop a product. It's first to get to know uh, how it works the existing one to make it better. So, but the, the best way to also understand a product is to trade yourself. So I spent some time to also try to work with it, and um, that was tough, <laughs> uh, actually, because it's very physical, and you have to carry yourself around during some hours, and also feeling the look at the other people when you're in the street is also an experience, um, because you are not in the box anymore, kind of. Um, one of the things I found out is that the walker looked like something from an hospital, and I didn't want to use it because it was very cold, it's very cold product. This is the part I found out. And after all, when you collect all this information, all this knowledge, um, you have all this data and you try to pick up uh, one of the ideas you want to work on because you can't just solve everything. So you have to find the right angle. And um, what I liked uh, was actually to work on the, the whole uh, physical experience with the product. So turning it to something powerful, um, maybe making a product look more like sporty, something that would show that uh, it's kind of cool what he's doing, um, he can actually carry himself around and it's, um, and I got my inspiration through extreme sport or sport in general, uh, with roller skate and bike, and I, I thought if I could translate this into the product, it would change the identity of it, and then it would be another relation that the user have with the product. So one of the phases after that is to sketch and, and keep also going back to the user all the time because it's important that he is by your side to understand if you're going a bit away from what you think is, is good. And after that when I found some shapes, 3D renderings and everything, I start building a prototype. Um, I made some shape that would, um, that would look more dynamic, um, like in sport shapes actually, um, would create a movement. And um, I used actually some handles from bikes, some brakes that you could use, some wheels from roller skates, and <laughs> some, some stuff that everybody wants to have, and actually he had that, so it's not of course. <laughs> and um, the great thing about the prototype is not only that you figure out how to put everything together, is that you, you can actually try it out yourself to find out if it's actually working, um, to find if the brakes actually breaks, <laughs> important. <laughs> um, yet to see if the shape uh, of what you sketch on your little paper is actually working in real life.
if the material are the right one, because it's very important to make something ready for industrialization afterwards. Um, so the color was also an important part because it's very user friendly. Um, so I chose some color that they liked and also that they could relate to sports. Um, so that's kind of the prototype. And um, so when I finished the prototype, I just bring to them because the best way to find out if I fail or not was that they could try out on it. So they've been testing it and breaking it, and <laughs> that was so much fun. And um, actually, it's it's kind of the most important part to see if you worked is actually relevant for them. And you can still have time to change it because it's not ready for industrialization. So you still have room for listen to them, as feedback, and change uh, some of the part of it. And um, that was just such a great feeling to see them trying out and be happy about it and be proud about it also because it's not at all, uh, they, they could relate to it. It's not something ugly you don't want to add. It's, um, it, it's still practical and uh, it, it doesn't have to be ugly because it's practical. So, yeah, <coughs> that's all our process kind of. Uh, how it, um, it shows how it's important to have always a user next to you when you want to do uh, a product that would fit him. And um, yeah, yeah, that's the product in one of the key parts, I would say. And if you want to know more about it, you're welcome to speak to me afterwards or go on my website. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>